right, seniors, good morning. This is Mr. Martin coming to you live. Well, it's live right now from Milwaukee. Uh, it's very late. I'm staying up late on a Saturday night. The uh, Ohio State Buckeyes are absolutely blowing out the Wisconsin Badgers. I am in Wisconsin. I don't really care about either one. Uh, so we're going to go on with vocab lesson 10. So I don't know what you're doing right now back home in Michigan. You're an hour ahead, so you're living in the future. That's great. Congratulations. Uh, I'm living in the past, unfortunately. Uh, but I am in Wisconsin, the land of dairy products and beer and bratwurst. But I'm in the Ronald McDonald house right now, so there's only good, healthy beverages in this house. Uh, a lot of milk donated by Mickey D's, which is very nice. Okay, so this is Vocab Lesson 10. We're going to try and do this as much like we normally do as if I were there to use the subjunctive. So when I had to show you the word uh, and the slide with the, the picture, the sentence, um, try not to look ahead in Schoology. Just kind of go off the screen with me today. Um, uh, Ms. Butcher will um, pause the video appropriately for you to have a time to talk with the neighbor about the possible meaning of the word, similar to what we have been doing all year. Here we go. Okay, first word we have this week is major domo. Say it loud and proud, everybody. Major domo. I didn't hear anything. Let's try it again, everybody. Wake up. Major domo. All right, you in the back. I see you. You didn't even move your lips. One more time. Third time's a charm. Major domo. All right, that's a little better. Let's take a look at the context. We're using real life skills, using what we know around the word and the context that it's used in to make an educated guess as to what it means, even if we've never seen it before, like a strange word like major domo. Here we go. Some people may argue that the vice president is merely a major domo to the president. Okay, take a few seconds and confer with a partner while the video is paused and speculate as to what major domo could be. Do that now. Okay, and we're back. I hope you paused. If you came up with something like an assistant, you are correct. Kind of a second in command, maybe. Uh, so notice I have a chief butler and uh, both the, uh, the uh, vice president down there as a kind of an assistant thing. All right, this guy right here, I have no idea who this is. This major domo, chief butler, uh, major dork, I would say. Here we have uh, Vice President Joe Biden. I don't know exactly what he does, you know, in the White House all day. I think he's just biding his time until uh, his uh, term is done. All right, moving on. Second word we have is untenable. Say it loud and proud, everybody. Untenable. Okay, I didn't quite hear you. Say it one more time. Untenable. That's a little better. Again, a word that maybe most of you have not heard of before. We do have an antonym there. Those of you who like to take your notes on paper, old school style, make sure that you write that down. Of course, this uh, presentation is also available on Schoology. So, the man's reason for attacking the innocent woman was untenable, since she had never done anything to him. Okay, take a minute and uh, try to infer the meaning uh, with somebody next to you. Pause the video and uh, compare notes now. Do that now. Okay, and hopefully you pause the video and we're back now. So, untenable. How close did you come with your partner to uh, guessing the definition? It means something that basically there's no good reason for it. It's impossible to defend. It's impossible to justify. Uh, you know, just walk into a room and uh, smacking somebody upside the head and walking back out uh, when they've done nothing to you. And there's no reason for that. It's untenable. Um, for a, a business to make a decision that um, affects many people's jobs, even when they're doing well as a company and they're making good money and they should be expanding, but yet they're downsizing, that's, that's again, that's untenable. Uh, so, of course, the opposite of this would be tenable or, as you see down below, irrefutable. Okay, it's something that you cannot argue with, you can't refute, it's defensible. Kind of like the instant replay on uh, televised sports now, sometimes they give defensible or irrefutable proof or tenable proof as to whether or not the runner stepped out of bounds before he crossed the goal line, etc., those kinds of things. So basically, untenable, uh, you can't defend it. There's no good reason for it. Tenable, you can. Okay, tenable, I think, is a word later this year, or maybe it was in junior year. Um, 
But uh, anyway, so we get untenable and tenable. Okay, moving on. Let me hear it, everybody, loud and proud. Perambulate. Yes, perambulate. We don't really need to take time to discuss with a partner on this one. I don't believe you can see what's happening there. Sunset is a perfect time to perambulate along the beach. I don't know what other synonyms you could come up with that would be logical. Yes, I know some of you could come up with some wacky things, but anything that would be logical here uh, would have to do with walking. And that's all it is. Perambulate's another verb, a uh, synonym to walk about or to stroll. Interesting little language connection, of course. Uh, right here, ambulate. Okay, that root of that word uh, has to do with movement, okay, being mobile, as it were. Uh, so <clears throat> if you are going into nursing or you're going into medicine or something like that, the word ambulatory will become uh, very, very common for you, very, very familiar to you. So a person who is ambulatory is able to move and get about. And, of course, if you're not able to move and get yourself where you need to be, then what pretty white... Uh, vehicle with sirens and wheels and all kinds of pretty colors will come and pick you up. Yes, the ambulance. There is a reason why an ambulance is called an ambulance. It moves you from where you are to the hospital if need be. All right, next word. Okay, let's hear it, everybody. Veneer. Very good. Yes, veneer. All right, the movie star's teeth were covered with a veneer to make them look whiter. Okay. Um, again, not a real tough one, pretty self-explanatory because we have a good visual on this. There are other things, of course, that have a veneer uh, that we could talk about. Uh, but if you're guessing, yeah, it's something that covers something, then you're right. Yes, it's a thin, attractive layer that conceals something common or coarse. Where often do we also see a veneer? Uh, on furniture, all right? Uh, so veneer, usually you're, you think of... Um, some kind of wood that is uh, simulated to look like oak or maple uh, or birch or something else like that. And uh, it's just a thin covering over a cheap piece of furniture. Actually, if you look at the very front edge of my desk, up at the front of the room, you will notice that the veneer is coming off. It's kind of chipping off. Uh, to be fair, I did not do that. That was, as some of you may know, uh, the room that we are in now used to be the Spanish room. And my room used to be what is now the Spanish room, so technically the desk uh, with, the, with the damage, the authentic battle damage, uh, to quote Kung Fu Panda, uh, used to belong to Mrs. Ellis, and we just swapped the drawers. No need to move big heavy desks around when we traded rooms many years ago. We just swapped the dra drawers and left uh, the desks, okay? All right, moving on. Okay, let me hear it loud and proud, everyone. Timorous. Timorous, okay? We've got an adjective here. Uh, describing word, of course. Again, pretty self-explanatory from the context of the sentence and the picture. The middle school students were timorous around the high school kids because they were big and mean. Okay, So, take a second and think about it to yourself. No need to discuss with the partner. And you're probably coming up with something like this. Kind of afraid or shy or timid around them. All right, So timorous and timid are perfect synonyms. Any place you can use the word timid to mean shy, you can also use the word timorous. It's just a little longer, a little fancier. Okay, um, And Tim Brinkert in the back. Uh, this has nothing to do with your name. So I hope you're not timid. And uh, just keep on rocking. Next one, let me hear it, everyone. Luminous. Uh, we have lots of adjectives this week that end in O-U-S, as we're going to see very, very uh, soon here. So we have timorous, now we have luminous. Okay, let me hear it loud and proud, everybody. Luminous. All right, very good. Uh, one of my favorite TV shows, Person of Interest. Uh, it's all about kind of a big brother watching every move you make, and they show these cameras. This is actually a still shot from the show. So when the red light on the camera becomes luminous on the TV show, Person of Interest, you know someone's being watched. Okay, again, not a tough word. If you can uh, relate this to other words that you know that have to do with light, you will get the idea. And luminous simply means emitting light. Okay, uh, so other things that emit light. How about jellyfish? Yes, they are luminous creatures, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? All right, because they are illuminated. Okay, um, if you're a fan of Beauty and the Beast, of course, uh, you know that the, the candle uh, is lumière. Okay, which means is the French word for light, of course. And, of course, uh, with prom just around the corner, well, a few months away, uh, or winter formal, isn't that coming up? I don't know. I don't even know what month it is. I don't even know what my name is anymore. My days are running together. But, ladies, how about a luminous 
uh, evening gown. Get your fiber optic gown today, okay? And really, uh, really light up the room. Here we go. Uh, next word. Circuitous, yes, another adjective ends in O-U-S. By the way, O-U-S is a red flag giveaway for an adjective like jealous or nervous. Here we have circuitous. It is an adjective. It's a describing word. Mazes are great excuses to take a circuitous route to a destination. This one, let's take a few seconds and brainstorm with a partner. A synonym for this word. What does this word mean? What is a word you could substitute in here to guess the definition according to the context? Pause the video now and confer with a partner and see if you can infer the meaning. Do that now. Okay, and hopefully you have paused the video for real or not just pretending to, uh, because I feel like an idiot telling you to pause. When you're not pausing, you need to pause for a cause and do that now, all right? Okay, circuitous, uh, you'll notice contains the word circuit. That's not a mistake, uh, because it means indirect and roundabout. Uh, if you think about the electrical circuits in your home, uh, they are not just straight lines. Uh, you go downstairs or go to your your main service panel, the main breaker box, and uh, start following the wires and see which directions they go. And of course, then they'll be behind the walls and the drywall. I would not recommend peeling off the drywall just to see where the wires run. But if you're in building trades, you know that um, you have a, a circuit that has certain plugs or light switches on it, and it all goes around and it eventually comes back um, through the uh, through the wiring system. The black wires and the white wires complete the circuit, and there you have it. Okay, so um, if you're ever taking a taxi cab in a city, uh, you want to kind of with smartphones now you can do this very easily. Let's say you're calling a cab to take you someday from your hotel to the airport or to some place of meeting or a restaurant or something. Um, check it on your smartphone first, see what is the shortest route, and then you'll know if the cab driver is uh, taking a circuitous route on purpose just to uh, bilk you for a few extra dollars um, by extending your cab ride. That's uh, That does happen. Okay. All right, next one, let's hear it, everybody. Perquisite. Okay, one more time, make sure we have it. Perquisite. Okay, again, the context and the picture make this pretty easy to pick up. Uh, Gladys thought she deserved the occasional, uh, occasional perquisites because she worked so hard, and you can see what that is. In this case, it's money, it's an extra little tip, and that's exactly what it is. It's a tip or a payment in addition to regular wages. Um, you might hear people talk about their jobs and how much they like their jobs, not just because they love the work, but because of the perks that come along with it. Uh, that's P-E-R-K-S, and not entirely the same thing, but it's kind of good a good way to remember that a perquisite is generally something positive, it's something extra, it's a kind of a bonus, if you will, uh, like leaving a tip or a gratuity for your server in a restaurant. Um, do not confuse this word with prerequisite. It's very similar to this one. A prerequisite is something that is required before uh, you do something else. So in college, for example, if you want to take English 110, maybe you need to take the prerequisite course, the pre-required course, English 100 first. So college students often will talk about the prereqs uh, for this course or that course, meaning the courses you must take in advance of, the, of that course. So perquisite, prerequisite, not the same word. Let's move on. Okay, the next one, another P word, let me hear it, everyone, probity. Okay, very nice. Okay, one more time, probity. Okay, and if you fizzle out, shame on you, you need to participate, wake up, keep talking. I'm talking, you should be talking, just at the appropriate times. Uh, it is a noun, let's take a look at the context here, probably not a word many of you are familiar with. Good business relations are founded on probity between partners. Uh, this is a hard word to, to show in a picture, so I, hence I added the, the halo here. I think you can see my little circular, uh, little cursor thing moving around occasionally. Um, but uh, it's more of a concept thing. It's more of a kind of a philosophy or an attitude. But uh, let's do take a second and uh, pause the video here, and you confer with a partner next to you as to what you believe probity could be. Okay, do that now. Okay, if you have paused the video and you're hearing me now, then you're back. Let's take a look at the definition. Whoops, excuse me. Integrity, okay? Respectability. Notice I-T-Y endings are often endings for nouns like security. All right, probity, integrity, respectability, and the opposite is impiety. So 
if you think about um, the word pious, meaning righteous or holy or basically good, uh, impiety, of course, is doing something wrong or being impious would be doing something wrong, as the juniors have their word impious this week. Uh, so probity is the opposite. Probity is good. Uh, it's something you want to show. It's like honesty. Um, it's char good character traits and qualities. And so any kind of relationship, business or even personal, uh, demonstrating probity earns you the respect and the trust of others. Impiety does not, and dishonesty does not. All right? So bottom line, probity good, impiety bad. Okay? Those are opposites. Okay, next word. Let me hear it, everyone. Tacit. Okay, tacit. Uh, music people. Let's take a time out real quick and realize that there is a musical term tacit as well. That is T-A-C-E-T. -E That's a little bit different. Okay, this one is T-A-C-I-T. -E uh, let's take a look at the context here. Children have a tacit understanding that strangers may be dangerous. Um, it, it doesn't take... Uh, a college course to, uh, or you know, to educate children on stranger danger. Uh, kids sort of, you can kind of call it intuition, whatever you want to call it. Um, this, again, this is kind of a hard word to show uh, or uh, or explain with a visual because it's more of a conceptual thing. Um, so I'm just going to go for it here because uh, you could be there all day unless you've seen the word or heard the word before. So tacit it means it's it's indicated but it's not expressed, or another way of saying it is it's implied silently. Uh, think about maybe walking into a room where two people are sitting there in total silence, and even though nobody comes up and tells you what's going on, you can sense that maybe these two people have had an argument, uh, there's just a sort of this tension in the air, and you walk into that, and you realize, hey, I don't think I should be here right now, and you just turn around and just walk out. You have that sort of tacit understanding. Okay, so um, if you get into psychology, you can talk about uh, tacit knowledge or tacit understandings, um, and so on and so forth. So, but the, basically, the things you just kind of pick up along the way, um, without having to have somebody spell it out for you or put it into words, you just kind of learn very naturally. So that's that's tacit. All right, speaking of people having arguments, not getting along, this word is, everyone let me hear you please, polemical. Okay, polemical. Uh, the context here with the picture and the sentence, please spare me your polemical remarks so we can discuss a relationship in a productive fashion. Notice that they're not getting much done here. Uh, they're not even looking at each other. They're, they're turned away from each other. Again, we're using our, you know, we have a kind of a tacit understanding here when we see them that they're, not having a, a good day, they're having a fight, something about that, uh, something like that, because they've been making polemical remarks, or maybe they had a very polemical topic of discussion. Okay, so take a second with a partner, pause the video at this time, and uh, brainstorm some possible synonyms for this adjective polemical. Do that now. Okay, so polemical. Correct definition is relating to controversy or arguments. So it's a decent visual. You can kind of see, yeah, it looks like they're mad at each other or they've had an argument. So if you think about it really polemical, here's a kind of a way to think about it. It has at the very beginning, uh, P-O-L-E, if you think about like the North Pole and the South Pole, uh, they're opposites, they're direct opposites. Um, and kind of with, like it with an argument, uh, he thinks he's right, she thinks uh, she's right, uh, he thinks she's wrong, she thinks he's, he's an idiot, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so they are kind of polar opposites, if you will. And uh, they're, they're at, a, at an impasse, they're having a disagreement. So polemical is, uh, yeah, something that kind of puts people at two different poles, this end and that end, left and right, or north and south, or however you want to think about it. So that might be a good way to uh, remember that as well. All right, let me hear this one. This one we borrowed from the French. I'm going to have to intentionally say this wrong so that I can say it right in English. This has a uh, harder or a more forceful G sound. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in English, largesse. Uh, the French would soften that a little bit. Largesse with a je sound, like in the word treasure, but this is je, as in um, je, just get on with it, Martin, already. Okay. So let's take a look at the context. Some business owners show their largesse by giving large sums of money to worthy causes like St. Mary's Hospital or Ronald McDonald House. Um, we are 
uh, enjoying staying here. Not that we enjoy being here for what we are uh, here for, but um, we are amazed at the largesse of, of people uh, who come and, and donate money or donate supplies or donate food to this place so families like us can uh, have things a little bit uh, more uh, manageable while we're away from our homes uh, with a chronically ill child in the hospital. So um, I don't think you'll need to take a lot of time with this. Uh, you can see that it's something good, it's something generous, that's all it is. Largesse is another synonym for generosity. So if somebody has a large heart, then they're probably pretty generous. That's a good way to remember that. Okay, next one, let me hear it loud and proud, everybody. Indolent. All right, indolent. Um, I just went with Napoleon on this one because I was thinking about that great movie Aristocats with the two dogs uh, in, in Aristocats that pop up here and there. They're kind of the, the comic duo, comedy relief part of Aristocats because it's a pretty intense film if you've seen it. And it needs that comedy relief of Napoleon and his good buddy Lafayette, uh, the, the hound, the couple of hound dogs. And, uh, yeah, you, you know you know Napoleon. He's the one who's always saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm the leader. Okay, that's the guy we're talking about. I think if this dog here could talk, that's pretty much exactly what he would sound like. All right, so Napoleon could have stayed productive, chasing cats out of the yard, but he decided to be indolent in a pool lounge instead. Okay, pretty easy to see what's happening there. Yes, you guessed it, he's being lazy. So indolent, another word for lazy. Notice your antonym there, prolific. Prolific means you're very busy, uh, very fecund, being very um, very active, being, being very productive, basically. All right? So not a tough one there. Indolent. Okay? All right. This is one of these words where if you know your Latin roots, it where you can at least relate it to other words that you know, it kind of defines itself. But we also have the advantage of a great visual that I found for this. I'm pretty pleased with it. Let's look at the context of this word. Let me hear you say it first. Circumlocution circumlocution, one, two, three, four, five, five syllables in this one. Uh, when presented with an overdue bill, Carly, that is not Carly Ingle, by the way, you can see the wrong color hair, uh, Carly resorted to circumlocution to explain why she hadn't paid yet and when she planned to send the money. Okay, so he is not amused. He is ready to receive this money. It's urgent. And she is using circumlocution to give him some kind of an answer. All right, take a few seconds with a partner on this one. Uh, pause the video briefly and uh, discuss what you believe circumlocution could mean. Do that now. Okay, and we're back. If you have paused for a cause, that's great. Uh, let's see how close you came to the mark. Yes, it means being very wordy or being very evasive. Evasive means to evade, to escape, to get away from. Uh, so let's take a look at circumlocution and split it right in half here. All right, if you know what the circumference of a circle means, okay, the, the measurement of distance around, okay, that's where the circular part of it comes in. Notice her words are making a circular kind of pattern around him. And then you get locution. Uh, if you look up the word elocution in the dictionary, you will see that elocution is basically the art of speaking. So you have circular speaking or circular speech or very roundabout speech. When you talk in circles, you are not giving a straight answer. Uh, you could even say that your words are a bit circuitous. So you're taking the long way around, right? kind of similar to that. But yes, uh, if you ask someone a yes or no question like, hey, you want to go to the prom with me? That's a yes or no question, and you get an answer that doesn't really say yes or no in it, then that person is uh, using probably, probably circumlocution to indirectly sort of uh, uh, fend off your, your question and, and resist giving a direct answer. Who uses circumlocution anyway? Well, I'll tell you. I'm glad you asked there. Uh, I would say attorneys are pretty good at that. Um, clever witnesses on the witness stand. Certainly politicians are great at using circumlocution. Um, lots of people in the media, uh, but never teachers. We always, always tell the truth. All right, moving on. Okay, let me hear it, everybody, loud and proud. Depredate. Okay, not a tough word. Uh, pretty easy from the context of both the sentence and the uh, picture. If you know anything about Vikings, you know what they're like, what they do. Uh, so in centuries past, Vikings and barbarians depredated villages for loot and supplies. Last year we read Beowulf, and we knew that uh, at the beginning, uh, Grendel had his way and would depredate Herat Hall, um, 
where the uh, Danes um, lay sleeping at night. So depredate, of course, is to do what Vikings do, plunder and pillage. Go in, ransack, uh, set fire to things, destroy things, take what they want, and uh, do what they want and leave. Okay, so depredate. All right, I couldn't resist this because uh, everybody digs uh, cats wearing Viking helmets, of course. So there we go, another visual if that helps you. All right, here's our blast from the passwords. Toady, you remember the visual of the um, the toadies for the, the bully in uh, Christmas Story, the BB Gun movie. Um, Todd Farkas, the bully, had lots of little toadies that hung around with him. Uh, the next one, penultimate, you will remember for uh, being uh, next to last. So if you have 10 people running a race, uh, the ninth person is the penultimate person, the next to last. So sixth hour, of course, is your penultimate course. If you have seventh hour, it is next to last. Okay, recrimination you just had a week or so ago. That is a counter accusation. Uh, so maybe I will tell you someday, hey, you didn't turn in that uh, vocab homework on Friday, exercise one and two. And you might say, well, hey, uh, you never ran off the copies and gave them to us or something like that. So I accuse you of one thing. You accuse me of something else. That's your recrimination of me. Okay, the next one, pander, is to, uh, you'll remember, uh, is to exploit somebody's uh, weakness or desire. Uh, advertisers are great at pandering to our desires or our weaknesses. That's why the kids' cereals are put at the uh, proper height in the supermarket so that kids see them at eye level. Uh, they don't put them way up high or too down, down too far uh, low. Uh, they're, they're pandering. Certain commercials come on television during sporting events for, oh, you know, things like cars, trucks, whatever. Uh, because they're they're targeting that audience, they're pandering to their desire to have uh, you know the next best thing. Okay, and then the, okay, the last one, ameliorate, simply a fancier word for improving or making better. All right, I have talked a very long time. It is very late, but uh, I just wanted to kind of share some of my insights with you. I uh, hope you got them all, and uh, that's it. Okay, hopefully I will be back soon. Uh, if Madeline gets out in the next day or two, hopefully Monday, hopefully today, this day that you're actually seeing this video, she should be released to Ronald McDonald House and then if she does well for a few days and we can come home. As I said in a previous email, I just want to get out of here and at least see you guys for a week before break because uh, I'm going nuts over here. Okay? Alright. Uh, that's it. Have a great Monday. Use the rest of the time today to work on exercise one and two. When I get back, we'll put all those in to the uh, grade book and uh, get caught up. All right. So, hey, by the way, if you're not doing your essay, I'm looking in Schoology. Lots of people aren't submitting anything on this essay. Uh, it's not magically going away just because I'm not there. It is due. Uh, please submit it. Submit something. Okay. We will still be working on them. Uh, throughout the next week or two and uh, getting them ready. It's one of the biggest grades and kind of one of the only big grades uh, since this happened with me being gone. So uh, hang in there and uh, that's it. Martin out.